these readings uh, would be read in, in Rome as they were going church to church. They'd, they'd travel and do uh, what they call station churches and they'd read the gospel and the readings outside. And so they would go to St. Susanna and they'd read these readings uh, on Monday of Holy Week. And St. Susanna is in the red light district. And so they purposely did this outside in, of St. Susanna in order that those people who are caught in... Uh, the slavery of prostitution would be able to hear but there's hope there's hope even for me um, and with the hopes that they would then be able to uh, escape from that life of slavery and we hear these two different examples of people who are going to be condemned first with Susanna and uh, here, here they are in Babylon they're away from home and uh, th they've set up a, a new home in Babylon and then these two elders are seeking uh, her with lust and because they can't get her they end up wanting to kill her and here we see this example now, I, I probably have said this every year since I've been here but we see this example of how God is defending the innocent he reaches out and defends this innocent woman who is chosen to give herself in trust over to Almighty God. In the Gospel, we hear about this woman who is caught in the very act of committing adultery. We don't know where the guy is, but uh, the, the scribes and the Pharisees, those who bring this to this woman to Jesus, they're not interested in the woman or in the man. They're only interested in in uh, getting Jesus in trouble. They don't care about this woman. They don't care about the man that they're not bringing before him. They care about condemning Jesus. And so they bring this woman before Jesus and said, how should we deal with her? And he's in a trap. Because if he says, with the law of Moses, uh, condemn her to die then he, they can go to the Romans saying he's inciting uh, something that only the Romans should be doing. If he says, um, you know, be merciful, oh, he doesn't follow the law of Moses. So they can just take care of Jesus one way or the other. And Jesus will not answer them. He goes down and he starts writing on the ground. And here Jesus is defending the guilty. Now in the Old Testament we see God defending the innocent. And I think for instance of Cardinal Pell and how he eventually was finally proclaimed innocent uh, after uh, going through time in jail and all that. But in the New Testament we hear Jesus, Almighty God, defending the guilty. The beautiful thing is, after everyone has walked away, in one of these translations, not in this translation here, but one of the tra translations, he says, it says, Jesus looked up and said to her. What does that mean? It means he was lower than her. He got lower than her. And this is what Jesus does. Jesus goes into the depths of our sin. He gets so low that he can catch us no matter where we fall. He's always below us to catch us. And this is the beautiful thing. None of us is innocent. You know, there's that old joke that goes, you know, let the, let the one among you who is without sin be the first to throw a stone at her. And this stone comes flying over and says, Mom, stop that! Of course, Mary is without sin. But the rest of us, none of us is innocent. None of us is innocent. And Almighty God goes into our crud, into our sin, into the depths of our brokenness. And he goes lower than we are in order to catch us when we fall. And so to raise us up. As we're moving very quickly towards Holy Week, and we remember the great love of Almighty God as he died and rose again for us. It's a call for us to remember 
There's no place that we can fall that God is not there to catch us if we let ourselves be caught and sort of fly into the arms of God. Not to be discouraged by our sinfulness and our struggles and our brokenness and our woundedness, but rather to turn with trust, with confidence to Almighty God. Say, Lord, lift me up. Lord, I'm sorry. Forgive my sins. Lord, be merciful. And he will be.